call your spot. Mine. Big pillow. Because I made them. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I don't either. <sighs> you like it there? No. No. Okay, let's go. You ready, Jimmy Buffett? <laughs> What's wrong with my outfit? It looks cute. like you look good. All right. Cheers. Cheers. To a hundred episodes. Hundred episodes. <laughs> That's an accomplishment. I don't know. I don't know if we plan on getting this far. But no. Here we are. Wow. Here we are. In the middle of the Sea of Cortez. Yep. Sailing to Anchorage. Hosting our hundredth episode. And because it's such a beautiful day, <laughs> we're sailing and it's semi-quiet and really calm, we thought we would do something kind of special. Yes. So, what is that? <laughs> well, I was thinking how happy I am to even be sailing at two knots, which is as fast as we're moving right now. So I thought, well, let's just put together an episode of what we've learned, because I have definitely learned to uh, calm down and be more patient. Slow down? Slow down. Yeah. So let's do an episode on what we've learned over our two, two and a half years of sailing so far. That's incredible. Two yep. years and it's been a blast. Over 8,000 nautical miles we've traveled almost starting 10. almost 10. Starting in the Caribbean and then passing through the Panama Canal and all the way up to the Sea of Cortez. Yeah, it's been a journey. Yeah. <laughs> so we quickly kind of put together a list of what our top five and maybe even a little bit a few more. Probably a few things more. that we've learned. A lot of these are gonna come across as like, well, yeah, duh, it doesn't matter. It's lessons to us. It's things that maybe we didn't know or or just didn't realize how important it would be or what a big deal it would be. And it was like, yeah. we had a few aha moments like, oh, wow, okay. So yeah, we're gonna try and go through this list and maybe record it in one take. Oh, yeah, right. I don't, I don't know, might have to think about that. But we're gonna have a good time. We're gonna have a drink. You guys should have a drink with us. Cheers. Even though it's nine in the morning. I don't care. Nobody knows that. You just told them. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, now you know. It's Sorry, nine in the morning. Sorry, Mom. This doesn't happen all the time, I swear. So who knows what happens? It may land a fish. We'll film that. Maybe a whale pop up. Yeah, that has happened recently. So, ladies first, you want to go over? Ooh. Uh, is it in like any particular order, number one, or just like top five things? Top five things, whatever. What is the first thing that comes to your head? I have it here in case you forget. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would say for me, a big change or a big thing that I had learned is adjusting to live aboard life. And that means buying the food and cooking aboard and dealing with small spaces and minimizing our lifestyle, mm -hmm. essentially. The lack of space and yeah. really the lack of need of too much. We don't need that much except I mean. for hats and bags oh god and shoes uh -uh. <laughs> my shoe problem is nowhere near a lot of women out there or your hat problem my hat problem is on the verge <laughs> <laughs> it's getting there no anyways uh, i would say learning to cook aboard under sail got power stamps provisioning or buying fruits and vegetables because it's not like I can just walk down the street or get, hop in the car and or add something to my cart online and have it delivered to my front door. None I, of those things are possible. No, I have to. It's a commitment to go to the grocery store really. Really, yeah, because I have to either have make sure that we are either docked or at a marina nearby a grocery store, grab an Uber if available, taxi, walk. <laughs> with a trolley full of groceries and make sure that I have enough to get us by for maybe say a week or a passage of 18 days like we did in Costa Rica. Yeah. So those are some big challenges that I've learned um, and have adjusted to. It's not a job that I would want at all. I look at, you know, the limited cabinet space and the limited space for even plates and bowls and especially the limited space for food so it's been a challenge and i think you've done one. really 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 well like it's not a job i would want because you have so much to deal with refrigerator and freezer space is really limited so i had to learn a lot about what it means to just be happily aboard in terms of the limited food. space and yeah yeah 
Okay, that's a good one. That's, yeah, that's if, that might be each, my number one. If each, well, I'm glad you so placed I'm going the number backwards. one. <laughs> oh, it's like a countdown. Go, I maybe. Uh, no, no, I'm gonna build up. I would say start with the good, and I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off with a banger too. Oh. This is more technical, but learning what this boat in particular can tack to, which means it's a huge thing with passage planning. When we sailed to wind, it was a huge learning curve trying to figure out what the boat would actually do when sailing to wind. I wanna dive into this here real quick. I think what I'm trying so eloquently to say here is this. I thought in the beginning that we were gonna be, if we had to be sailing into wind, that we were gonna be making tacks at about 45 degrees into the wind. This was based off of all the general diagrams that I had ever seen showing angles of tack into wind. Meaning that sailing upwind to a destination would look a lot like this. And actually generally, that's about right. Except for a few key crucial points that make that assumption pretty inaccurate. First, while our boat will sail into wind at about 45 degrees, man, it's a real push. It requires constant attention at the helm to keep the boat from going into irons and luffing the sails terribly, not to mention a reduced speed and we're beating into the waves terribly. So it means a pretty uncomfortable slow ride. Oh. This is crazy, yeah. So we consider 50 to 55 degrees just about as close as we can comfortably sail to wind. That's not really all that bad or a massive change. Our tacks though are starting to look a little bit more like this. But second, the more important item that I was completely unaware of is leeway. Leeway is how a boat slips sideways in the water when a force like wind is being applied to the side of the ship. And ours is bad. In fact, most ships are bad, especially the production boats. Unless you're in a performance cat or a performance sailboat with big, long, deep keels or huge dagger boards, you're gonna give up a lot. And we give up about 15 degrees of slip or leeway when sailing to wind. So even though we are successfully keeping the boat pointed at 55 degrees to wind, what we're actually traveling, our course over ground is more like 70 degrees at best. And that's huge. It's starting to look like a completely different tack angle sailing up to wind. And probably explains why for the first year we were so confused when we were trying to reach somewhere that we seemingly should have been able to reach and sail at 55 to 60 degrees. But the answer is that we just cannot sail that close to wind. And it was a huge lesson for us. To reach a spot 100 miles away that is upwind, we have to sail over 250 miles by tacking back and forth. This boat and most catamarans, it's terrible. And I didn't realize it first. I just kind of thought if we needed to tack up into the wind, we would be tacking at like a 45 degree. No problem. It's terrible. <laughs> it is nowhere near no. that. It's, it's crazy. Um, so learning that and accepting that was huge. It also has made us really be careful of what of our passage planning because at first we would say, okay, well, the wind's gonna be at our 45, we can sail to that. No, no. nowhere near. No, no, we struggled for yeah. sure. Like, yeah, and we wouldn't make our destination, then we'd have to tack way back, and it always doubled or even tripled our, our, our time en route. And so, learning that and being able to plug that into our passage planning calculations has been huge, huge. and and then it was tough to accept that actually yeah, because <laughs> it have been slows tough to things for you. <laughs> down it slows things down incredibly one because, i don't know if you know this yet um after 100 episodes <laughs> he likes to get to point a to point b like lickety split i don't understand how anybody doesn't like i just i it's about the journey man. it is about That's the, the journey okay i'm learning that yeah it is it's about the journey and Actually, that would, that's one of mine. That's on my list. Oh, you but got another we'll, one. We won't fast forward no, to that. No, 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 no. Oh, no it's okay. turn, turn. Okay. You choose. Well, let's just keep going with the, the importance of passage planning. Okay, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, weather. That was a lot to take in initially and learn. In the Caribbean, it was a great learning ground. There was a lot of other cruisers out there, so it was a wealth of information that we got handed to us. And mostly the winds were so consistent. And they were consistent. And after getting out of the Caribbean and through the Panama Canal into the Sea of, well, 
first of all, the Pacific side and on our way up to the Sea of Cortez. We, we had to really learn what sailing really was. Yeah. Inconsistent I, yeah. winds, constant sail changes. Uh, it's the most frustrating sailing. Well, and just calculating, you know, what the winds would do and what and our speeds and making sure, again, we get into an anchorage daytime yeah. is preferable. Just the weather, learning the weather out on mm. the sea is probably a lot of people's fear of getting into this lifestyle. Mm. Um, of course, the weather and the ocean is intimidating already, but once you kind of understand the weather and the ocean, it makes it a little bit easier to slip into and feel comfortable and know that you're going to get from where you are to the next place and no problem. I think but it all it all means you have to plan. You have to le learn to read the weather, you have to plan your your hops, your legs. I think way. you just touched perfectly on one of the main things here is getting comfortable on your boat and at sea. Yeah. And and a lot of things we're talking about have to do with becoming comfortable with what we can do on the boat, what the boat can do, right. and knowing what the weather can do and what we're going to do in those cases and becoming more comfortable and like, you know, finding our voice, yeah. finding our sea legs um, in a sense and, and being comfortable that, with like, sailing. You know, the passage planning is always going to be exactly how you hope Because it with won't. the weather. It won't it will be. Not. And you just have to be ready and on your toes to sail change uh, maybe a hundred times for a two-day passage. <laughs> it's happened. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, duck into a different anchorage or somewhere that's protected because everything is a little too much to handle. But it, I mean, planning is important and also plans don't always work out. But Yeah, so learning the resources, yeah. learning, you know, what, what they mean and how to read them and decipher, you know, the valuable information. That, it is, but, sure. but we both have. and Yeah. I had a flying background, so I interpreted it quicker and more easily, but you have really, like you're on top of it, she'll do the whole well, passage the, planning yeah. all by yourself now. Yeah. You know, finding the weather, finding, you know, and what what that means for, you know, sea conditions too. You do all that. That's important. I wouldn't That's say huge. that I'm like great at it because I still am like, well, I'm still well, not good Sometimes you'll refer like... back and be like, hey, what, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. But Other you do it. Yeah. Good. Yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, number two for you. Number mm -hmm. two for me. How to reef. Again, I know, <laughs> like, yeah, of course you got to reef as a sailor. I understand what reefing was, okay? Reefing is reducing the amount of sail. There's attachment points on all the sails to bring them down and reduce the amount of sail that you have out due to the weather conditions. As more wind, as the wind increases and you get more and more wind, you're going to reduce sail and reduce sail. Side note, where did that word come from? Why is reefing? That, yeah, why is that a sailing word? You know what? I don't know, but good question. And if anybody knows, reef. But who knows why a lot of these words, sailors are just confusing. It's a pulley. No, it's a block. It's a rope. No, <laughs> no it's, it's a, a line. line. <laughs> that was another thing I think I should put on my oh, list. Yeah. Is learning like, the terminology. Learning the oh, no! oh, no. See, I told you anything could happen. Come on. Come on. I'll check the wind angle real quick. I'll spill the beer. Beer almost went down on my new blanket. No! Pretty perfect. Ah! Hold on, I'm taking care of it. <laughs> oh. Watch, wait for it. Wait for it. Come on, Ace. Boom. <laughs> All good. But does this mean the wind has shifted and now we're going not where we need to go? That is correct. There it is. Oh, good. Well okay. done, honey. Oh, thanks. Thanks for saving my beer. Where were we? Course change. <clears throat> Reefing. I this side, is important. I sidetracked. Yeah. Okay. Reefing is so, so, so important because it's one of the biggest safety things that you can do on the boat. Having control and confidence to reef when necessary and in any conditions is so important. Five. Wild ride. Craziness right now. And once we really got a handle on that and fully understood really what to do, I mean, we've done it now it in huge in, gusts. It in, was in intimidating. The, yeah, of course, intimidating. Yeah. Even because in moderate when you have conditions to reef, that during just the day. Means, like, conditions are ah, more, deteriorating yeah, usually. Yeah. More than you can handle. Yeah. But once... And it needs to happen like that. Like, you need to get the sails down. Like, they need to come down and you need to be able to do it proficiently. And I think once we really got a handle on doing that, our seamanship increased, our um, 
confidence de definitely increased and our safety increased. Yeah, like you said, when, when we need to do it, it's because the weather's deteriorating and we need to be able to do it. Then. And most of the time it's at night, you know, when you're tired and there's one person awake and all of a sudden one of us is knocking on the porthole, we gotta go, let's, get, you know, and we but came up. This one, this is a big one. If you take anything away from the video, let it be this point. It's probably the biggest improvement in our sailing skill and therefore comfort that we've made to date. Fall, the winds usually are reduced, um, if not, but we always sail with a reef. Yeah, and we'll reduce sails just... When in doubt, reef, yep. I would say. And We've learned when to reef, how to read the weather, and, yeah. and, and the actual act of reefing is... It's not complicated, but man, it's it can be definitely intimidating, and you really need yeah. to get proficient at it. Mm -hmm to be a better sailor and and we've gotten to that point where it doesn't matter we can do it i mean seriously single-handed at night i think our sail. boat a fontaine peugeot uh 40 foot lapari is designed in a way that makes it a whole lot easier to reef without having to leave the helm that's true to coming up to the mast and doing everything that just adds to the the risk uh, especially in higher winds and high, bigger seas losing somebody overboard yep really yep absolutely so it's a safety thing and yep. that was huge for me um so that was one of the big ones okay you go next uh what else have i learned a lot oh i would say for me the travel aspect and the destinations that we've we've gotten to do living on a sailboat obviously we get to lift anchor and move our home from one place to the next and that's very easy that's easy saying goodbye is not easy not so easy for me and Warren and I, we differ, differ very greatly in this in this aspect. Um, I could stay in all these places that we've been to almost indefinitely. I think, <laughs> like, yeah, pretty so, much. So, so you need somebody to like reel you and be like, "All right, it's time to go." Yeah. And I need somebody to reel me in and be like, "It's time to slow down a little bit." Exactly. Yeah. So I think there is a balance for sure, but I think that was the hardest thing is getting to go to these beautiful places, um, and then just learning to accept that. We've enjoyed it. We've got to see it for what it is at that time, but we know there's another beautiful place just around the corner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's that's been a hard bit, for you to that's accept. That's been a hard thing for me to accept and learn um, to deal with. And sometimes it's not just me. Sometimes it's like, okay, well, we got to get out of the Caribbean because it's becoming hurricane well, season, and we and have I to think move that was on. The you biggest know? learning point for me is, as much as I want to be in all these places and tick all the boxes and see everything. I understand that our life is very much dictated by the weather and the conditions and the sail. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if I had my way, you know, I would make sure that it was oh perfect weather all the time wherever we were. <laughs> With no hurricanes and no, no yeah, reason to leave? exactly. But I think it's a message in, in, in the sailor's world that it's just, you know, Make moves. Time to go. Lift anchor. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Mm. Moving on. I think we kind of touched on this. For me, it was really tough. You know, I'd heard about the speed that cats could operate at. And even this cat is a really good catamaran, but it is slow. And most boats are, you know, and that's fine. I knew that it was going to be slow. It's just not, it's, it's not plausible in a lot of these, you know, production cats, which is what we own and most likely what you're going to end up getting if you get one. And it was, it's been a really hard thing to accept. How slow? I knew we were going to go slow. I know sailboats are slow. <laughs> I mean, we're going two knots here, you know, maybe probably Barely. right now less. <laughs> so I've had to really learn to base my happiness off of the quality of sailing. This isn't working. It's all right. Just keep going. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, it's been hard for me to accept how slow sailboats are. I mean, and I know, again, everybody's like, yeah, are you kidding me? You didn't know this? No, I knew it. <laughs> I knew they were slow. I didn't know how slow. We have a great boat. Unless and she you keeps to up be with on a lot. the racing team and yeah, go to America's Yeah, but that's boat. just not, I mean, that's just not a liveaboard sailboat. Our average over what, almost 10,000 miles right now is about three knots, you guys. Three knots. Three knots. Three knots. I mean, in good winds, we'll hit seven, eight, nine knots yeah. consistently. And when you motor, unless you're just flat out, which no, if you're cruising on your boat, you're not going to be both motors flat out 
going eight knots. No, mm, no. you're going to be one motor milking it, doing the best you can at three and a half and four knots, you know, and that just lowers the you, lowers your average. And so our average is about three or four knots. So and yet we've done slow. a lot. Yeah, like, but that's been one of the hardest things for me to accept. So right. that that's one of my that why Lessons that's why learned. I made it made the list is because I. It was hard to accept, man. I thought we would average at least six, seven knots, you know, and be seeing I nines think, and tens. I think you think you thought that we would be halfway around the world by now. I also thought that we were going to have, that the wind was going to be always blowing. Always that, in your favor? Always in our favor. And if anything, <laughs> it's either not blowing or it's right on the nose. Oh, so. Talk about having your cake and eating it too. Yeah, I know. Okay, so there you go. That's okay. my number three or four. I don't know. I don't, I lost I don't track. know if there's an order to this right now. Where am I? Marriage at? challenges. Oh, let's talk about that. Oh, yeah. Another, this one hits home a this, little bit. Yeah, this, this, this isn't sailing. One. This is... It's exacerbated by the fact that we're living on a sailboat, so it kind of applies here. Okay, a couple things. It's tough. Warren and I um, kind of jumped into a lot right away. Yep. And we were together for three years before we got married, we and we knew each other for 12. Yes. So it wasn't like this was a new thing we just all rushed into. But after getting married, we were on the boat within... So we got married, and then I would say months. about um, five months after that, moved onto the boat. Three, yeah. Well, a month after getting married, we moved out of our newly built home. Onto a, into, into a, a truck. truck and, and did a three-month road trip okay, across so country. Then, three months then into moved the onto our boat. So... That's, that's a lot of big life changes to happen in a very short period of time. And then to move to a confined space. So, um, I know we don't portray a whole lot of our relationship. I think only just now we've kind of opened up, opened up and shared our character with you. Filming also is another it's, it's challenge. It's hard to film those things. It is very hard to film those moments, but... In all honesty, marriage is not usually the easiest thing aboard. Um, we are stuck in a 40 foot by 20 foot space. I, I say stuck lightly. And if we get into an argument or if uh, we just need a little space, there isn't that. You can't just go out for a walk and you can't just go down to the pub and catch a couple beers with the boys or go, you know, ride motorcycles or you go. Out. Out with the girls right. for a night, you know, drinking wine and just talking, which is so important, you know. It's, I think it's, it's important to have that balanced relationship where you have your independent time um, with other people or just it independently. That's been a challenge for sure. But it has been a challenge. However, I think we've handled it. Well, we're getting much, much better. Getting but better. but imagine in the beginning when it was bad, if you have a fight with your wife or husband. A and, small argument about the dishes. And you cannot leave <laughs> the kitchen or your living room for, I mean, you can, we could drop the dinghy and go, but if we're under sail, you can't. Okay, no. so even if you could leave, it's like kind of a, and to drop the dinghy, it's usually two of us dropping it. But even it, you then, know, and, and like, tough. if there are moments where I need to confide in a friend or a family member. Oh yeah, phone calls and contacts. I need to make a phone call to someone just to vent or talk it out. It's often not even We possible. are still in a 40 foot by 20 foot space, so I can't just talk with somebody else. And or not even get them on the phone is challenging because yes. we're in a foreign country and we're often without even cell service. Yeah, that's yeah. a challenge. That's Mar a good one. Marriage has been tough uh, aboard. We're doing okay. Don't, We're doing good. Don't, don't worry. Yes, but the I beginning was questionable. But I, again, like we portray a lifestyle that um, it's glorious all the time. Yeah. It's just it's really hard to document that. Behind the last the thing you want to do truth. is pick up a camera and point it in another person's face or your own when you're upset. Okay. And for the most part, it is the we are mostly happy and positive but the fights yes. do happen and the yeah. challenges are there they are real so that was a learning thing yeah. but we're getting better i think we're getting better i think we're getting stronger yeah. i think it was a huge shift in huge our learning curve. um overall lifestyle from yep. life on land immediately to life aboard <laughs> mm -hmm. as a married couple my number four is no agenda and slowing down and connecting with nature i mean and i'm gonna just of... i'm gonna touch on that just a little bit like it's yeah. been really really cool I've always been, I've always been a nature lover. I've always loved backpacking and camping and just being completely disconnected. But this is on another level, you guys. This is crazy, <laughs> crazy disconnected. Yes. You know, where we're out at sea for days, we've seen nobody but each other, no land, no nothing. And all you have is like, and you get so excited about birds. I mean, like our passage to, we had this little bird visit us four, four or 500 miles out at sea. And we were just enthralled with this little thing that hung around for like an hour. Baby, don't move.
Baby, don't move. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I cannot believe it. Oh my god. Did you get that? Yes, just the tail end of it. Oh, that is absolutely nuts. He just said thank you yeah, to you. I think he did. Oh. It was yeah. great. So that's that's important. But I think I kind of already touched on that. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to move to my number five, which is how rough sailing is. Ah. Arms, it's been wild. Yeah, not much sleep. No, not much sleep at all. And it is nasty out right now. Ah. <laughs> this was... Another thing we don't portray very well. No, or the footage, doesn't the footage portray. just doesn't do it justice, which is part of the reason why it made my list because we just didn't understand because most of our experience came from watching how many hundreds of videos or thousands really of videos of other sailing channels. Mm -hmm. And even though they stated this, the videos do not do justice no. to the sea state around them. We just didn't know. And no. so I did not know when you have good winds, you're going to have big seas. It just, it's just it a trade off. It depends on which way you're going to sail them True. As well. If you're going fully, if you're going down sail all of the time, which is absolutely impossible. Unlike our sail from Roatan to, to Columbia. Columbia was just awful. We were into the wind for nine days and it was the roughest thing ever. I mean, there's we've a lot had, of tears. We, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot of rough seas out there, you guys. And, and I know sailors that are watching this are like, yep, you're, yep, duh. you should know that, duh. And it's just, it's, you cannot show it with videos, so we just did not know that when you have good winds and you're really moving really well, you're in big seas, you guys. Yeah, but I think that's the life we chose. We chose a life to be adventurous, adventurous, and, yeah. and we left life of comforts and I guarantee you're going to be plenty out of your comfort zone yeah. if you do this. Every day is different. Yep. All the conditions are going to constantly change on you. Um, it's just a, it's a test to your adaptability. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and how you handle everything. Yep. And I have to say on that note, I think we want to close it out. Yeah, I think we're pretty that close to done. Overall, this is a life I could have never dreamed of. Yeah. It is beyond that. I'm getting cheery eyed and I've had one beer <laughs> and a shot. Well it is nine o'clock <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> Again, nobody knows that. It's more rewarding than we ever thought. All, All right. the challenges are they pale in comparison to right. the rewards. There are tough sure. moments. There are difficult, uh, difficult situations that we've tried to figure out and handle. But again, the positive aspects of this lifestyle has far outweigh the beyond. Negative. So, anyways, we hope you enjoyed that. I think we have one extra. <laughs> oh! It doesn't really make the list. It wasn't really a lesson, but no. something that we definitely had to learn to get used to. So irritating. Is the noises, you guys. Goodbye, honey. Good night, baby. <sighs> What's that noise? That's the main sheet block, babe. Oh. I can't tell you for the first. It's funny too because <laughs> when we have guests aboard, they go through, and if they're there for a week, they yeah. go through a week of um, what we went through for the first month or two yeah. of, is there somebody on board? What's that noise? What's that noise? It's like, are we are we dragging anchor? Are we yeah. going to bump into a boat? Is it, 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 what's going cause on? Because they've heard the stories, you Creaking. know, that things happen, and so they know what's possible. But there are so many noises aboard, and the owners who own this boat before us who really kind of briefed us on the whole thing said to, to them the noises were one of the biggest things to learn and get used to and they said you're gonna learn what is a good noise and a normal noise versus what needs to like what's not normal and what yeah. like is a warning you know yes. this has got to end our ears have absolutely become oh. tuned to the boat yes. and what what is a normal noise and yes. you know something that maybe indicates a sail change is needed or the wind speed or direction has changed mm -hmm. we definitely can pick pick up on that it's funny to watch a visitor come and and go through the same thing for their you know week on board yeah. and look back on now you know what it's like <laughs> <laughs> exactly and look back to what we went through for the first couple months really yeah yeah no. but overall it's been a great learning experience we've enjoyed our two years aboard we're looking forward to many more years absolutely and here's to a hundred more.
Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers, babe. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks. Huge thank you to our Patreons, yeah. you know, and, and anybody who's watched even a, even one video. Liked we really and or subscribed or commented. We Which love it all. Which you all should do. <laughs> so thank you guys. Cheers, guys. Mmm. Out. Perfect timing. All right.